Okay. Uh, with a prayer, I will do the workshop, the way of salvation. Okay. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you. Uh, you gathered us to have the time uh, enjoy this gospel. Help us to restore this gospel and relay this gospel to the field. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prayed. Amen. Okay. Um, mostly to non-believers and you meet uh, in the field, the non-believers, you do not have much time and they, and also they do not listen the message uh, for a long time. Because of this, uh, when you okay, meet the non-believers in the field, uh, you can briefly deliver the way of salvation uh, within three minutes. So it is very uh, short and simple. And also the five minutes, the way of salvation, in that case, you know, uh, those who attended the church, if they have uh, the experience to attend the church, then maybe they can know some Bible verses at that time. You can use some Bible verses and deliver the five minutes, the way of salvation. And um, if you are a minister, then, okay, you should have the whole picture of the gospel, uh, the way of salvation. So I will have the complete version of the way of salvation. So with three things, I will, okay, do the workshop. Okay, uh, first, uh, uh, the three minutes, the way of salvation. God made the heaven and earth create this man also. Originally, man was a uh, created to be happy when he is with God. But man who was deceived by Satan, the devil, committed sin by disobeying the word of God. So he left God the source of uh, blessings. As a result, man became the slave of the say the child of the devil so he is he lived his life unhappily on this earth and then at last he will go to hell die and go to hell but the love of god uh, he sent the savior to us He is Jesus. Jesus died on the cross and resurrected. Through this, he accomplished the work of a Christ. As a true king, he broke the Satan's authority. And as a true priest, he forgave the sin of man. And as a true prophet, he opened the way for us to meet God. So, when you accept this Jesus Christ, at the time, you uh, became the child of God from the child of the Satan. As a child of God, you receive the help of the angels and live your life happily on this earth and then at last you will die and you will go to heaven okay now let's accept this jesus christ into your heart so please follow me my prayer with your confession and then you can lead them to the acceptance prayer so Okay, I will uh, give the example of the acceptance prayer in the five minutes, the way of salvation, okay? Okay. 
God, who created the heaven and earth, Genesis 1, 1. He created man also, Genesis 2, 7. God created man in his image and blessed this man, Genesis 1, 27 through 28. And God gave the word only this man, Genesis 2, 16 and 17. But man was deceived by the old serpent, the devil, the Satan. Uh, that is Genesis 3, 1 to 5. Man committed sin by disobeying the word of God. Genesis 3, 6. So as a result, man departed from God, the source of a blessing. So from that moment on, your father, the devil, man became the slave of the Satan, John 8, 44. And he served other things than God. Galatians 4, 8. It is what? Idol worshiping. So man became heavy burdened and weary. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, the mental problems. And you know, every disease is, men have tortured with uh, every disease and physical problems. Acts 8, 4 through 8, the physical problems. And men lived with many problems on this earth and at last, Okay, man is destined to die once, and after this death, he will face judgment and go to hell. That is Luke 16, 19 through 31. The afterlife problem and all these problems became a spiritual inheritance. So he will deliver these spiritual problems to his next generations. Uh, that is uh, Exodus 24 and 5, post-tree problems. Men try to do, come up from all these problems. He did the religion. He led the religion. Matthew 28, uh, 12, 28, 29. But Okay, old, it, it gets harder and hard. it makes the problem harder and harder. And he tried to solve this problem. He practiced the philosophy, Colossians 2a. But it is what? The uh, vain deception and human traditional knowledge, uh, human basic knowledge. And also men did solve this problem. The good is Isaiah uh, 64, 6. But all these good deeds are a filthy rag on God's eyes. So with these good deeds and even the philosophy and the religion, man cannot come out from all these problems. So the loving God sent the Savior. Okay. So John 1, 14. The word became flesh, made his dwelling among us. And Romans 5, 8. When we were still sinners, he demonstrated his own love for us indeed. So when we are sinners, he okay, demonstrated his love, died on the cross, and And 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Okay, according to scripture, he died and he resurrected. It is resurrection. And he is Jesus, Matthew 1, 21. The work Jesus did, that is Christ, Matthew 16, 16. As a Christ... Okay, as a true king, he 
destroys the, the work of the devil. 1 John 3, A. And as a true priest, he set us free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8, 2. And as a true prophet, he opened the way for us to meet God. John 14, 6. John 19.30 It is finished. He solved all our problems on the cross. So, all the problems are over. So, what he asked is one thing. That is what? Believe. John 5.24 Anyone who believes he has eternal life, then how can you believe? How do you believe? John 1, 12. Anyone, those who received him, those who believed in his name, then how can you receive him? Romans 10, 10. Okay. Uh, if you believe him, in your heart, and if you confess me with your mouth at the time, you are saved. Then, uh, if you receive him, what will happen? That is Revelation 3.20. I'm knocking at the door. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will enter into you and eat with you and you with me, he said. Then, when should we receive him? Proverbs 27, 1. Do not boast about tomorrow because you do not know what will happen in one day. So now accept this Jesus Christ into your heart. Please follow my prayer of acceptance. Okay, Please follow my prayer all together. Living God. Living God. I'm a, sinner. I'm a sinner. After leaving God, After leaving God I, became a slave to the devil I became a slave to the devil and lived unhappily with the various problems. We live unhappily with various problems. At this time, At this time I opened the door of my heart. I opened the door of my heart. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord. In my heart. In my heart. Who has crushed the devil's head? Who has crushed the devil's head? Forgave all my sins. Forgave all my sins. And became the way to meet God. And the way to me, God. Please come into my heart. Please come into my heart. Through the Holy Spirit now. Through the Holy Spirit now. Make me a child of God. Child of God. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth. Guide me and work. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, you can uh, okay accept uh, Jesus. You accept Jesus Christ now. So now you became the child of God. First John three two. So. With his Holy Spirit, God will guide your life and he is abide in you. John 14, 16 through 17. So, in the name of Jesus Christ, when you pray, your prayer will be answered. John 14, 13 through 14. And Hebrew 114. Okay. The angels are mobilized. God will send the angels to help you. 
you can receive the an angel's help. And Luke 10, 17. In the name of Jesus, you know, all the power of darkness was broken down already. And Philippians 3, 20. You have the citizenship of heaven. You will enjoy the background of heaven on this earth and will go to heaven. And Acts 1 A. Okay. In your remained life, please live your life as a witness of this gospel that Jesus is Christ. Okay. Do not be shaken. Be sure. At the time, the Satan will depart. Romans 8.38 And be nurtured by the word of God. Matthew 4.4 4. At the time, your faith will grow. And John 4.23-24 okay. Enjoy the worship. God is finding the true worship Worst person even now. And Mark 3, 13 through 15. There is a reason God called you to evangelize. So please invite the person who want to live this gospel message. Okay. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.18. The message of the cross is what? The power of God to those who are saved. And Acts 16, 16 through 18. When you draw the way of salvation, at that time, you know, the darkness, the power of darkness will be depart. And Matthew 12, 28 through 29. At that time, <coughs> The okay at the time the strong one in that region will be bounded. At the time, Acts 13 48, those who are appointed to be saved will be met to you. And Colossians 4 3. God will open the doors of evangelism. Okay, this is the five minutes, the way of salvation. And then, alas, the, the complete version of the way of salvation. Okay. Um, and through this, the, okay, the complete version of the way of salvation, you will realize uh, why we should believe in Jesus. At the time, you will understand the rightfulness of a uh, Jesus and Christ. Okay. John four twenty four. God who is pure, He created the heaven and earth, and even He created man. When God created man, he created man specially. So, Genesis 1, 27. God created man in his own image. It means what? God created man as a physical being. At the same time, he was created as a spiritual being also. So, Genesis 2, oh. Genesis 2, 7, it says, God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. At that time, man became a living being. So, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, uh, said, man was consisted with what? The physical body plus and what? The spirit. Man who received the spirit Oh, it means what? Man is the being who can have fellowship with God. So, you know, created by the 
in the image of God, it itself is the blessing. So Genesis uh, 1, 28. God blessed man and said to man, God gave man the word. It said, you know, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth and subdue and rule over all the creatures on this earth. When you see Psalm 8, or 4 through 8, it is more specific. What is man? You are mindful of him. You created him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and you crowned him with honor and glory. You entrusted everything, okay, every works of your hands into man's hands, and you made man rule over all the hands of your works, and you put everything under his feet. So God gave his spirit. Why? Let man has a spirit so he can have, as a spiritual being, man can have fellowship. And God gave man his words. So through the words, man can have fellowship. Even man can give him the strength to keep his words. So to sustain this blessed relationship, God gave man a commandment to sustaining this covenantal fellowship relationship. That is Genesis 2, 16, 17. God, okay, already God prepared the Eden, the Garden of Eden. He prepared everything in the Garden of Eden and then lead that man to the Garden of Eden and said, okay, Cultivate the Garden of Eden. So you can eat everything. It means, you know, everything was uh, in your hands. that You can rule over in this Garden of Eden. And then, but you should remember, you are the being who have covenantal relationship with God. So he gave that commandment. Okay, you can eat every fruit. But do not eat the fruit of good and evil. When you eat of it, you will surely die. If this command was sustained, man can enjoy everything on this Garden of Eden and live happily his life. And he can rule over and subdue everything in the Garden of Eden. But what happened to man? Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Okay, Pastor said, you know, it is Genesis chapter 3 problem. Then Genesis chapter 3 problem happened. What is this? No. The Satan who entered into the serpent, he deceived man. How? Okay, do not eat the, okay, please, eat the fruit of good and evil. When you eat of it, you will be like God. God said, do not eat. If you eat of it, you will surely die. Does it have some poison? So God said, okay, do not eat, you will die. No, it is the command to sustain the covenantal relationship between God and man. But Satan attacks that point. Especially, he using what the um, okay, he attacked man's the arrogance. If you eat of it, you will be like God. What does that mean? You don't need to listen God's word. You don't need to obey God. You yourself eat that fruit. You can know. You will be like God. You yourself become God. You don't need to obey to God anymore. So man who was deceived by Satan, he disobeyed the word of God. Through this, he commits sin. As the result of sin, what happened? 
separation came to man. So this is what? The Satan problem. And it is the problem of sin. And it is the problem of separation. That we say, the Genesis chapter 3 problem. It is not just a you know, simple instance, eating one fruit or not. It is what? The instant breaking the covenant, covenantal relationship. So, um, Hosea 6-7, it says, Like Adam, you broke the covenant and be unfaithful to God. So from that moment on, this is the sin of Adam and Eve, the first man. But Romans 5.12, it says, you know, through one man, sin entered the world. Through sin, death came to man. So in this way, the death came to all men because all have sinned. The first man was deceived by Satan and committed sin by disobeying God, you know, it, it what? It splitted the covenantal relationship between God and man. So separation came to man. So in this kind of a situation, every man who was born between Adam and Eve, they all have this problem. We call this what? The original sin, the inherited sin. So Genesis chapter 3 problem, it says about the original sin. It was not the sin I myself commit, but when I was born already, it was what? The imminent inside in me, and I was born. So when I was born, when we are born, already we were born as the child of the devil. So John 8.44, you, you, okay, your father, is the devil, it says. And Romans 3, 23, it says, you know, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all, no exception. So Romans 3, 10, it says, there is no one righteous, not even one. Why? We are all the descendants of Adam and Eve. Because of this, what came to us when you were born already, we were separated from God and born. So uh, Ephesians 2, 1, it says, you know, we were dead by our transgression and sins. Spiritually, we were dead. We should have a relationship with God, covenantal relationship. But because of this Genesis 3 problem already, you know, what comes? The separation came to man. That is the original sin. It is what? The Satan sin and separation problem. So, every man was born, belonged to the Satan. So, John 8, 44. You belong to your father, the devil. <coughs> so, you know, as a child of the devil, the way to serve their father, the devil, that is what? The idol worshiping. Exodus 20, 4 and 5. You know, so people, they want to try to meet God. But all they're, you know, okay, trying, that is what it revealed in this kind of a, a shape. Okay, they try to make something and they try to bow down and pray, asking the blessing. But it is not the real God. So we call it idol worshiping. When we worship other things than God at the time, who works 
the evil spirit works more and more. So we do not have a real peace. Matthew eleven twenty eight. We do not have real peace and real comfort. But instead of that, weary and heavy burdened. Even though so we have so many things, but still something bothers us. Even some people, they have much money, but their money gives them the worry. And even though they have, you know, nice house and, you know, many things, but in their heart, there's no true satisfaction. So they stick to something other things. And also, you know, they have, they feel some empty hearts. Later, it reaches to man as a physical problem. So, X, A, four through A, including, you know, physical diseases and every kinds of a physical problem came to man. You know, the family problem, children problem, and also economic problems and relationship problems. Every kind of problem came to man. It is the physical problem. So, you know, they live with so many kinds of problems and tortured with many things. And at last, they will die. Man is destined to die once. But after death, what is waiting for them? The judgment is waiting for them. And after judgment, okay, men follow the Satan. So after judgment, they have no choice but to go to hell, which was prepared for Satan. So Luke 16, 19 through 31, it is what? The afterlife problem. And then Matthew 27, 28. All these problems became a spiritual inheritance and it will be delivered to their next generations. So the blood of the Jews who crucified Jesus, that you know, blood was what? Was on their next generations. So after Jesus died. The Israelites, Israelites, they lost their country and for 2,000 years. They were wondered, they wandered all over the world and also even they were died in the Holocaust. Their descendants, you know, as, as the Bible tells us, you know, the blood of their ancestors' sins was come upon their next generations. So without any reason, there are so many, you know, Israelites died in the time of what? The Hitlers. Okay. Men want to come out of all these problems. So they did their efforts. They have a religion. Matthew 12, 43 to 45. Even they do their effort, but using the religion, through the religion, they clean their house of their hearts. But what happened later? You know, if your heart was not filled with the true God at the moment, you're, you know, the, uh, how can I say, the thief, the Satan bothers you and works in you more and more. So those who believe that some religion so diligently, you know, their okay, next generations receive the curses so much. So with this religion cannot become a solution to that. It makes the people harder and harder. And some people uh, try to solve their problem with the philosophy or science or the Knowledge, Colossians 2a. But 
this philosophy cannot become a solution for them. Why, you know? The science itself, okay, the science gave man the convenience, but it didn't give the real solution to man. So even though this, okay, science was so, technology and science so developed in these days, but even the more disasters arising around us. And some people try to solve their problem with their good deeds. Isaiah 64, 6. But it is what? In God's eyes, it is just a filthy rex. Already, man was corrupted. So that corrupted man's good effort itself is not, you know, real goodness. It is like a filthy rag. And also, you know, some people try to solve their problems by keeping the law. Romans 3, 20. But, you know, this keeping the law, law was given for us to realize we are sinners. So with this keeping the law, we cannot be saved. And also, you know, um, it cannot be a solution to us. And then God, uh, man, tried to solve their problem with uh, attending the church. But if it is not the true gospel, then it is like a other religion. So with the philanthropic movement, with the uh, mythic movement, with the legalism and the social justice movement, it cannot win over the Satan. So all man's this effort is uh, useless. Why? All those problems are the result problems uh, from this, you know, Genesis chapter 3 problems. So if you do not solve this, you know, main problem, the original sin problem, then, you know, there's no way. But when you think about this, you know, a fundamental three, three fundamental problems, the Genesis chapter 3 problems, then about Satan, you have no hope. Why? Men who have the phys physical, be uh, physical body cannot win over the Satan, who is the spirit, right? And also, you cannot solve your problem of sin. When you are born, you were born as a sinner. So, okay, the, what, the waste of sin is death. Without shedding blood, there is no forgiveness. Even someone dies instead of you, but that death cannot become a solution. Why? That man also was a sinner, so, you know, he had no choice but to die because of his sin. So there's no solution. If sin problem was not solved, then, you know, we cannot solve the separation problem. Why? Okay. God is righteous God, so he cannot stay with the sin together. So man who is sinner cannot come before God. So this separation problem we cannot solve. So with man's effort, it is totally hopeless. So the only being who can win over this Satan, God he himself gave us the solution. That God's solution is what? The Christ. So, even this solution was not given without God's love. So, John 3, 16. God so loved the world, so he gave his one and only son. So, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Without the love of God, man's you know, salvation is totally impossible. That love of God demonstrate his own love for us. That is what? Romans 5a. The Christ. It says, you know, while we were still sinners, while we are living in this, you know, as a sinner, Christ died for us and demonstrate his own love for us. 
through his love, God saved us. That love was demonstrated through the crucifixion of Christ. So God's solution, that is what? The Christ. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, 13 through 15. This Christ was what? Already prophesied as soon as, as the moment God depar a man departed from God, as Adam commits sin, immediately God gave the solution and he continuously said about this, his solution. So, God prophesied that he will send the Christ, the Messiah, the Messiah who will come. And it was fulfilled in the New Testament. That Messiah who was uh, uh, prophesied came. That is the Christ. So, okay. Uh, the represent okay representative prophecy about the Christ that is what in the Old Testament Genesis three fifteen we say this the original gospel the first gospel God gave to man what is that God said you know He will send the offspring of woman that offspring of woman will crush the head of the serpent it means what the Satan so. Christ is the one who solved the problem of Satan's sin and separation. So it said, you know, the offspring of woman will crush the head of the serpent, the Satan. And he will sacrifice and he will forgive our sins. That is Genesis 3.21. So when you see Exodus 3.18, it says about the blood sacrifice. So the offspring of a woman who is not the offspring of a Adam who has the original sin will come and he will die. He will shed his blood. Through shedding his blood, he will forgive our sins. Isaiah 7, 14. Okay. A virgin will give birth to a son and you will call him Emmanuel. The offspring of woman comes he will open the way for us to meet God so at the time we will be with God Emmanuel that means is what that meaning is what God is with us so he will solve our problem of a separation it was already prophesied about the Christ in the Old Testament. And that Christ came. Okay, the position who break down the Satan's authority and the position who solved the sin problem and who solved the separation problem, that position, that office is Christ. Then who has this office? Fulfillment, Matthew 16, 16. Peter confessed, Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the Christ, the one who break down the Satan's authority and forgive our sins by shedding your blood and solve the problem of a separation from God. Jesus, you are that Christ. If that Christ is, you know, Mary, we should believe in Mary. If that Christ is Mahomet, then we should believe in Mahomet. But that Christ is what? The Bible reveals that Christ is Jesus. And even, okay, John, no, Acts 17, 12 through 13. Even Paul said, you know, it is rightful that Christ should die and resurrect. Why? As a Christ, he should what? Break down the Satan's authority and 
he should solve our sin problem. So he rightfully died and he rightfully resurrected. And Jesus, I'm proclaiming to you, is that Christ, he said. Who is the Christ? Jesus is the Christ. If Jesus is the Christ, he should the evidence as a Christ, right? So what is those evidences? When you see Matthew, mm. Matthew 1, 20, okay, 18 through 23. He should come as an offspring of woman. So when you see Matthew 1, 18 through 23, Jesus was born from the Virgin Mary. When Mary, okay, okay, before Mary, lie with uh, Joseph, you know, she was uh, conceived by the Holy Spirit. Jesus came as an offspring of woman. And John 19, 17 through 30. He should die, not because of his sin, but he should die for others. So when you see John 19, 13 through, uh, 17 through 30, he crucified on the cross. Even Pilate said, I cannot find any sin. But he died on the cross. It is what? The sacrificial death. And Matthew 28, 1 through 20. And the critical evidence that Jesus is the Christ, he died and resurrected. Resurrection means what? It testifies he won over, he won over the authority of hell and Satan and death. Who holds the power of sin? That is Satan. Oh, you know, who holds the power of death? That is Satan. So resurrection shows that he won over the death and the Satan. So then who is Jesus? He even was born from the virgin and even win over the Satan and the death. John 1, 14. Okay. John 1, 1, it says, you know, there was a word in the beginning, and that word was with God. That word was God. John 1, 14, it says, that word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Jesus was the Logos, and he clothed it with human body and came to this earth. He is Jesus. And Philippians 2, 6 through 8. Okay. Originally, he is nature God, but he didn't, equality with, he didn't consider him equality with God, but Lord himself, and became human, and even he obeyed to death. That is Jesus. So John 10, 30, he himself testifies, I and the Father are one. From here, we have the uniqueness. Come, we have the uniqueness. Got the solution? That is Christ. Who is that Christ? Only Jesus, right? Not Mary, not Mahomet. Only Jesus. So, Acts 4, 12, it says, There is no other name was given to us by which we must be saved. Only Jesus. The reason why we should believe in Jesus is that Jesus is the Christ. You should know the rightfulness why we should believe in Jesus. Then it is what? The salvation works of God. When this become mine, Ephesians 2, 
8 through 9. Okay? This salvation was given to us by grace, through faith. Grace means it was given for free. That does not mean, okay, it has no, no words that it was given for free. No. You know, with what kind of things we cannot buy it. So it was given for us for free. So when you think about the grace, you know, think about it. Okay. Already when we were saved, we were, you know, from the beginning, we were destined and chosen by God before the creation. And even God's appointed time schedule, he called us through the evangelist. And even when he confessed that Jesus is Lord, it was not done. It cannot be done without the power of the Holy Spirit. So it is totally by grace. So the Bible tells us, you cannot boast about this salvation. And those who receive the grace can confess the faith. So by faith, so if God asks us some other things, you know, we cannot satisfy that condition. Because of this, God already accomplished this all the salvation works. And then he asked is just to believe. So only this okay, belief can come to those who receive this grace. So by grace, through faith, we can be saved. Romans 6, 3 to 11. Okay, those who believe, they receive baptism. Okay, what does that mean, baptism? When we believe, what happened 2,000 years ago become ours. 2,000 years ago, Christ died for me and he resurrected for me. So, you know, when we receive the baptism, we do the, okay, we do it, uh, immersion. Okay, when we enter into the water, it symbolizes, it makes us realize that when Jesus died on the cross, you are included in him. Your old self already died. And when you come out from the water, at the moment, like Jesus resurrected, you were born, included in Christ, you were born as a new one, new being. So, you know, baptism is what? The it symbolizes the unification with Christ. So, those who believe and receive the baptism, God gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit, Acts 2.38. So, those who believed and accept him, he became the child of God. So, our status totally changed when we accepted this Jesus Christ. We are no longer the children of the devil anymore. Our status changes. 1 uh, Corinthians 2.12 But we received the Spirit of God. We are the person of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. So, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 says, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and God's Holy Spirit dwells in you? We became the temple of God. God's Holy Spirit abides in us. And this Holy Spirit in us you know, he guides our lives. So John 14, 16 through 17 and 27, 26. You know, he, the Holy Spirit, abides in us. And he leads our lives. So we can, walk, we can walk the walk of faith. And even this Spirit, Holy Spirit, works. And even, you know, receives our prayers. And also he works in us with his Holy Spirit. 
That is what Acts 1 a. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will receive power and you will become my witnesses, he promised. And then according to our status, what follows? The authority follows. Okay, that is John 1, 12. To those who accept him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. As a children of God, we have the right, the authority. Where are those? Hebrew 1, 14. The angels are given to us as a ministering spirit. We can receive the help of the angels. And Luke 10, 19. Okay. God gave us the, okay, the power to uh, trample on the scorpions and snakes. And no one can harm you. Already we have what? The authority to bind up the Satan. In the name of Jesus, we can proclaim that in the name of Jesus Christ, all the power of darkness be binded up, be bounded up. With prayer, you can bind up the Satan's power. It was given as an authority to us. And also, Philippians 3.20. We have the citizenship of heaven. It means, you know, while we are living on this earth, we can enjoy the background of heaven. And when we die, we will enter into the kingdom of God. We are the people of the kingdom of God. Even though we are living on this earth, but we do not belong to this world. We are belong to the heaven. And then God gave us the greatest privilege. What is that? God called us the main figures for the world evangelization. He called us as the one who will restore this gospel and relay this gospel and to save all the world. That is Matthew 28, 1, oh, okay. 18 through 20. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth was given to us. So go and make disciples. I will be with you to the end of the earth. It is his promise. So with this true gospel, when he made the disciples, he promised he will be with us to the end of the earth. This was the blessing God gave to us. So okay. as a believer, you do the way of salvation, you will have assurance of your salvation. At the moment, assurance of answering prayer will follow, and assurance of guidance will follow, and you will have the assurance of what? forgiveness, and also you will have the assurance of victory. So here, the way of salvation, the, okay, it was a uh, divided five points. The one, first one is what? The original man. How man was created, what kind of being man is originally. And then, what happened to man? This is the fundamental problem, or we call it Genesis chapter 3 problem, or original sin. Because of this, you know, man became a non believer. So it is a six non-believers stage. All men who are unsaved live in this course. And then it is what? The God solution. When we know the true problem, what is real problem? That is Genesis 3 problem. Because of this, at the moment when we know this Genesis chapter 3 is the real problem, at, the no, at that time, you have no choice but to have the conclusion that Christ is the only solution. That Christ is Jesus. 
Because of this reason, we believe in Jesus. We should believe in Jesus. When we believe in Jesus, what kind of blessing we believers have? The seven blessings, status and authority. So, as a believer, what we should do is you know, these seven blessings. And as a believer, we should break down this you know, six non-believer state every moment. So, in this way of salvation, the most important part, we should know the true problem, the real problem, and the true solution, the answer, the Christ. So, it is the important point. Uh, and also, you know, uh, I did the workshop, The Way of Salvation, but anyway, in your field, uh, you cannot, okay, you cannot do it like this way, some cases. Uh, According to the uh, field situation, what kind of person you meet, according to that, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you can deliver the way of salvation to them. And especially when you meet the non-believers or the people in the field at the time, you know, most of them are caught by these uh, six problems. And then, you know, uh, this problem can become the contact point. So using this, let them see. You should open their eyes to see the real problem. Genesis chapter 3. At the moment, you know, they can see the answer Christ. So that is the main point. Okay, uh, that's it. Okay, anyway, uh, let's have a 10 minutes break and then uh, Pastor Shin, he will deliver okay, the gospel chart. Okay, thank you.